Welcome to Winning Conversations, a new podcast brought to you by Heritage of Faith. I'm Tanya. And I'm Andy. And we're joined today by her sweet mother and senior pastor here at Heritage, Annette Bridges. Pastor Annette, alongside Pastor Justin, have been leading this ministry for 14 years. She has served as pastor for 31 years and is a wealth of wisdom when it comes to ministry, parenting, and walking out a life of faith. Enjoy sitting and listening as we dive into our conversation. Hey, Pastor Annette, we're so glad to have you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Are you glad that she's here? I am so glad. (laughs) So, Andy, is it fun to be a pastor's daughter in the conversation today? You know, this isn't my interview, it's hers. So let's just, uh, just, yeah. (laughs) We're going to have a fun time. It is really a treat to sit down with you. Uh, I just want to kind of start at the beginning, just unpack a little bit maybe of your childhood, how you grew up, and what what were your childhood experiences that really shaped who you are today? Oh my gosh. Where do I I start? Um, I was raised obviously in a in a Catholic home so my realization of God was always there. You know, I I, just going to to Mass, um, but yet dealing with um, not having a, a having a foundation but not having um, the spirit involved in our lives um, just I, w- I just grew hungrier and hungrier for God um, my parents didn't go to church as, as often as I went even as I, even as a child and um, had to deal with my dad's my dad being an alcoholic um, and taking care of my little sister um, it really taught me to turn to God for everything, um, just because I knew He was there. And um, so I, I believe not growing up in a Christian home, but in a religious household, it made me hunger for more of a relationship with God. It um, it really kept me on my knees. Mm-hmm. So I don't regret any of that. If I could change it all, you know, you know, people say, if you could right. go back and change, would you change it? And I thought, no, because that's how I came to be who I am. So that's good. Yeah. That's good. Sometimes you can look back with 2020 hindsight and say that was really impactful to me right. for those reasons. Um, do you think that those experiences led you down a path into ministry? Cause you've basically done ministry the majority of your life, right? Yes. Um, at some point, I, I started going to an Assembly of God church, and I really credit the body of Christ um, just so much. There's so much in people, and they don't even realize that a look, a touch, a phone call, a letter, how much influence that is on a young person, especially, you know, since I was a young person going to to um, Assembly of God church, just having the leaders there, the youth leaders and, and the other sponsors um, looking out for each other, so it it speaks a lot about community and connecting with others. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I I mean I thank God I thank God for laborers who are serious about. And again, it, it's not a big thing that they had to do. It was just a phone call, um, a a note, or just coming over and asking how are you doing. Um, people don't realize how much impact right. that has. Uh, is there one specific or one you can think of that was just that just really impacted your life or touched your heart? Yeah, um, probably my youth pastor. There was a, a point in my life where I had had a, a friend pass away, and so I was a little disillusioned. Um, again, being a teenager, trying to you know figure out God, um, and so I was really confused at that time, just trying to make up my mind whether I was going to go forward full force all in or whether I was just going to take a step back and um, I remember the haha <laughs> obviously there was no cell phones back then we just had that one <laughs> phone we had that one phone, phone in the kitchen with the long cord and I remember being asleep and my dad waking me up on a Saturday morning and he says you have a phone call and going in the kitchen you know and and pulling the string or the cord all that the way. That is still there, by the way. <laughs> Serious? Yeah. Somewhere in the house. Somewhere. <laughs> but going into the garage and cl- try to close the door so that they wouldn't hear my conversation, and it was my youth pastor, and he just said, hey, girl, I was just praying for you, thinking about you, and I want you to know that God loves you, and he has a plan for your life. And that 
even though it was just a, a short phone call, he had no idea what I had been going through, but the Holy Spirit did. Mm-hmm. And so that was a turning point in my life where I was not looking back anymore. Mm-hmm. I was not looking back. I was going to trust God regardless of what, you know, what happened. Mm-hmm. Right. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and you've been you've been now pastoring for like thirty one years, is that right? Right. Thirty one years. That's in a long, ministry. That's, that's in ministry, mm-hmm. in some form of ministry. Right. Um I know people often see you guys, you and Pastor Justin, and they don't always know that there are struggles behind the scenes, that there's right. things that you have to battle, things you have to win, things that you have to put up with family or friends or anything. So what is it like to to live through those ups and downs in such a public role? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's you, a loaded question. It is. You yeah. feel like your whole family is in a fishbowl. I mean, it's just not you. It's everyone else. Um, how to, With the grace of God, just totally with the grace of God, and asking him um, what's priority. What, I mean, obviously we care for people. So every, every time there's a phone call, every time there's a need, we, we, we pretty much have to stop everything, you know, and, and pray for the grace to, to go forward in helping them. But, you know, having a family and being in ministry, I think at the very beginning we did it backwards and, and obviously, um, there's, I heard somebody once say um, that you're not the only one that's in ministry, that your children won't be in ministry as well. And even though they didn't ask for it, Mm -hmm. um, they see it. They're a part of it, and they see the good, the bad, and the ugly all together. Um, The one thing that we should never do is compromise our first priority, which is our family, Mm -hmm. um, before ministry. And so at any point, if, if, you know, there's so much pulling from the church or so much pulling from the people in the church that it starts to affect your marriage or it starts to affect your family, then something's wrong. You know, I know that the anointing on our life is for others. It's not for ourselves. And I know that. Um, but you have to navigate ministry Um, always filled with the Holy Ghost and always being led by him as to what do I tend to now or what who else can I put on this I don't have to feel like I'm the only one that can answer those questions or go to the hospital or be by their side Um, especially when there's um, things going on in your own family Um, I think being transparent is is key our our congregation our people need to know that we are we're people too. Yeah. You know, so um, I thank God that we have such a a, a great church family that see that right. and we're, we can be open with and transparent. Right. And they're, they're sensitive to that. So that's good. That's helpful. That's good. You mentioned that parenting and putting your family's needs first mm-hmm. are a priority for you. And I've as, I mean, Andy obviously has known you a little longer than I have. Just a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know that you've parent, you've been a parent as a uh, married in ministry. You've been a foster mom. Mm-hmm. You've had a blended family. You've been stepmom, and now you're grandma. You yeah. you wear all of these parenting titles, um, and have for several years. So, what is the what is the when you boil down the priorities? What are like the top three things? you would say to parents or you think that parents specifically in ministry but in any um higher profile right a public setting what would be the things that you would you would encourage them to do with their family because you've done all the parents yeah definitely I mean, the more important question is how did you raise such an <laughs> awesome group of children um uh, i think yeah, is I the more important question <laughs> top yeah it's next on my list yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> um oh my goodness um, I know that children, you know, the word talks about how children are, you know, gifts from the Lord, and they are. They certainly are. Um, my whole perspective changed when I spoke to a woman that I've never met and probably will never meet, maybe until we get to heaven. But um, um, I was making reservations to go to, to Colorado 
um, for a, it was a marriage retreat, and at the time I was we were having some issues with our teenage son, our oldest, and I don't remember what I said to her that made her catch on to that, and but she was being led by the Holy Ghost definitely because she said to me, she said you realize that. Um, she said, I need you to realize that you, as a mom, are God's gift to your children. And and I didn't understand that. And she said, God saw the kids that you that he that you would have and knew the things that they would go through, and he needed to pick a mom that would be just as stubborn <laughs> through their teenage years, okay. that would that would be just as um, strong willed as they are in their, you know, when they're babies, when they're twos. And he had to choose the right mom that would not give up on on praying for them um, and the responsibility that you have. He knew that you would lead them to God's throne room. He knew that you could hear from him on how to parent, on, on what to do. And so he chose you. So in every um, area... I'd like to say, I mean, obviously, I thank God for grace, and I haven't been perfect. I've made lots and lots of mistakes, but that's that's key, is understanding that God chose you because he knew that you could hear from him <laughs> on what to do, and even if it's a small thing, um, I don't, when we do it in an, in and out of ourselves, that's when we mess up. That's right. exactly when we mess up, right. so... Um, and the tenacity and the strength and the wisdom, all that, my goodness, it doesn't come from us at all. It comes from being submitted to God and asking him for wisdom, you know, and what to do next. Yeah. Help me not to. So that's how yeah. you raise just the best, most amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's especially it. Especially your daughter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know there were days where I thought, you know, this is why some... <laughs> species of animals eat their children <laughs> when they're young. <laughs> I remember thinking oh that lots. I'm like, oh, okay, so that's a normal okay. thought. That's yeah, good it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're not a schizophrenic if you think that in one <laughs> second and the next second you're okay, like, okay, I love God. You again. I love yeah. you again. I, I love that. you again. I'm back. Yes, yes, I'm back to loving you. Back yeah. to where it is. Even though you are a copy of me. It's not me. It's you that's acting that way. It's not me. Yeah. We are like our mothers. Kids kids do reflect their parents. It's yeah. hilarious sometimes. You're like, oh, gosh. Yeah. Why is yeah. Addie will look at me and do something, and I'm like, I. it makes me so frustrated, and I'm like, Wait okay, minute, I have made that me. exact same <laughs> face before. That is me. Wait a minute. That is me. Yeah. Right. Oh. It's funny when kids reflect reflect you as parents, yeah. and you just you're just like, oh gosh, man, yeah. am I really like that? I have one that's more like me, and one that's more like Ryan, and it's it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, anyway, so you just mentioned that lady that's spoken to your life. Mm -hmm. um, when you think about people who've influenced your walk, who comes to mind? Oh my goodness, influence my walk. Yeah. Um, in the last how many years? Because I've been around for a minute. You have been around for a minute. For a but minute, there's been lots of people in different part in different times of my life that have that have been influential. Um, obviously, the Savells, just watching their integrity and spending time with Miss Savell and seeing, you know, just getting to know her and and um, but just their integrity. But the other person definitely um, would be my husband. Just seeing his the way he is the same always the same and um <laughs> i've not always been even tempered ha 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 we laugh um i've you That's know such a surprise i know and i i will not throw things today i will not you know waking up in the morning i have hurt no man yet <laughs> but um I watched him early on when we were dating, like 15 years ago, or 14 years ago, 15, 14 years ago, and he would get phone calls like after a Wednesday night service from people in the church going, I can't believe you let that person preach, and, and what's wrong with you, and, and you're supposed to be, pa you know, just, mm -hmm. and, I, and I, I watched how he handled that, and he was so calm, <laughs> and he loved, regardless, I mean, he'd have people call him and cuss him out and say, horrible things 
And I watched him just be even-tempered, not, ne- not ever get upset um, and react in the flesh. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I want to be like that. I've never, I've never known anybody to stay so right. calm. It's like, it, you know, even, even when it involves um, even his child, he doesn't, I mean, I have seen him. I've seen him in the middle of, of it, and he stays calm, and he's like, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I'm not going to react. And I'm thinking, I'd react, and then I'd ask for forgiveness, oh, you yeah, know. Yeah, I'd react it. <laughs> yeah. right. What? Yeah. Are, you, are you telling me that you're just staying calm? I'm more mad for, for you, you than you are. And um, so it's been a process of just learning that. Mm-hmm. Not to, to to react not to. and not to be a you know right. a huge mama bear, which yeah, that's <laughs> good. So one of the things we watched you as a congregation walk through, and you're still kind of in the season. Yeah. But um, what I love about our church is that even when you are going through something, we really do a good job of surrounding people in prayer and oh, support. Yeah. And we just watched since mm-hmm. Mother's Day, you go through this whole experience and issue with your mom. And it's been neat to watch the body of Christ kind of come around you and support you. What has that been like as she's got to the point of recovery? What has that support meant to you? What has it been like to know that you have a whole church body really standing behind you? Oh my goodness, it's been incredible. I've, I have sensed such a, um, just a mighty grace. And I know that people are praying even when I was in the middle of it and, and Justin would say, you know, the church is praying for you. It was like, I could feel it. I literally could feel it. Um, even in the middle of the night, getting up and, and being there for her, um, going without sleep for long periods of time. And even in the hospital, sleeping in the hospital with her, I could sense the prayers. They're so tangible. I mean, it's been incredible. It has been so incredible to know that there's a, my my church family is is praying and people will ask is there anything i can do for you and i'm like you're doing it you're praying you're you're bombarding heaven on our behalf and i know beyond a shadow of doubt i know that um, the reason she's recovering and she's getting stronger every day is because of the prayers of the people Mm -hmm. i know that i know that that's amazing well we're always here i mean it's, it's really neat to watch a body of Christ rally around something like it. that. It's I a beautiful it. thing. Um, you, I've watched you lead in student ministries and kids ministries and um, women's ministry. You've done a lot through that. And then just being in the pastoral role, I'm sure, also has its adventures. If you could pick, like, your favorite or the one that you enjoy the most, what would, what would you say? It would have to be student ministries. Student ministries, yeah, kids, min- kids ministry. Why is that? Just because the kids are so receptive, you know, they're eager. They'll ask questions, and I love to see when they get it. Um, it's it's exciting. They're not they're they don't hold anything back as far as their faith. You know, you tell them that God could do it, and they totally believe it. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. They're they won't. You know, mm-hmm. and and I I can see when they get it, so it's exciting. I just I love working with kids. I love being around the kids. And you've worked with kids most of your entire life, right? Yes. Yeah. What definitely. all have you done in that realm? Uh, children's pastor. Mm-hmm. Um, I help lead a, pup, a puppet ministry. Yeah. Um, I can't. You ran even, two daycares. Ran two daycares. So yeah, definitely. Just it's fun for them to to um, get to act out whatever it is that we're talking about. Now, obviously, you can't do that in big church. Like have the adults sure. kind of act out whatever it is. I yeah. wish <laughs> that would be so cool. But you can use a lot more props and um, be more animated and and then have them act it out and then trying to figure out how it applies to their lives. Um, there's more time in doing yeah. all that. It, and they don't care whether it, your sermon is polished or not, <laughs> you know? Yeah. They don't care. That's awesome. So, Do you remember yeah. any, like, uh, 
child like Sunday schools or like big things when you were a kid? Like no. Big Other moments when you were a kid cuz I can remember like VBSs, those were like big like influential moments in my childhood at church. Probably the VBSs. I was thinking about that recently when, or when we were talking about giving to the church and thanking God for people that give um, because it was they it it was afforded them the opportunity to go out and pick up children. So I remember being one of those kids that the bus would come and pick up to go to a VBS. Obviously, Catholic Church did not have VBSs. These were Baptist churches right. that were having them in our in our town. And my parents would let me go to them when I was like three or four. Right. So I do remember that. Now, I don't remember what they taught, which is what I, I always tell the teachers. You know, they may not remember exactly what you talked about, but they they were touched by the love that mm-hmm. came out of that message, the love that you showed to them as you passed out the cookies and the Kool-Aid or whatever. You know, because I can tell you from experience, I know that I remember being picked up by the bus. I remember going to the church, but I don't remember exactly what was taught, but I know it meant something. When I went home, it made me more hungry for God. I wanted to know more. So if anything, children's ministry is to spark a a forever hunger, you know? It's to spark a, a, a desire to, to want to know God more, you know, whether I influence them or the story influence them, which more than likely, you're the one that's going to influence them more. You know, I don't remember her name, but I remember she was really nice and she gave us cookies and that was amazing. And it was at a church. Mm -hmm. So you connect that with God. So God must be really good and must give me cookies. (laughs) You know, he's a good God because do you see what I'm saying? So we're representatives. We're constantly represent representing the God that we serve or the God on the inside of us. That's so. so funny that you said that because uh, I, when I was in sports in high school, my number on my back was 21. Like that was my mm-hmm. sports number. But the reason it was is because the one Sunday school teacher that I really, really loved, I guessed, I didn't know for sure, but I guessed she probably was 21. Like it was just my guess. And because I really liked her and she had made an impact on me yeah. and she had loved me in Sunday school. Like, I was like, well, then I'm going to wear number 21. Yeah. Like, isn't that yeah. the most random? It is. <laughs> but that's cool. But even even but like Andy, her name um, is Andrea because I would met a, a, a youth leader at a camp, and her name was Andrea, and she – she ministered to me. She she was just amazing. So I knew back when I was 16 years old that I would have a daughter that Andrea. would be, yeah, Andrea. she would be Andrea. I knew that she dream would. Fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. Dream fulfilled. You're a dream fulfilled. <laughs> yes, yeah. I am. Hmm. Yes. Uh, but yeah, and you know what? That also, not just children's ministry, um, how that it plays into just in, in your walk with Christ or your, you know, your relationship with the Lord through Christ. Um, what an, there's a freedom in knowing that you're going to influence people's lives. Obviously you want to influence them for the best, but knowing that, that anointing or that calling on your life, um, you're always going to be ministering to people. It's not anything that has to be forced. I can remember the first time Um, when I was directing the preschool here, there was a mom who, which is hilarious because the same exact scenario happened at a, whenever I was first pastoring at a different church and and leading the school over there. But there was a mom who was troubled and she needed somebody to talk to. And I'd already been dealing with 25 teachers and 200 children, different things going on. So I went over to the church to talk with her and I I didn't have anything (laughs) in me I had zero I'm going okay God this is going to be all you because Mm -hmm. and then I thought after that whole the whole thing happened she did I did talk with her I did pray with her she accepted Jesus I didn't have to do anything it was all the Holy Spirit I'm just going wow that was like that was effortless And, and God's going like like you think it's all been you, you know, <laughs> you know, right? it's been me all along and it's just a, there's got to be a submitting. And then I remembered like t- 
10 years prior or 12 years prior that had also happened and um, it was Marie she it was a somebody who we know now but um, I know Andy knows her but she had was the same scenario you know she just needed somebody to talk to um, she wasn't in a church she didn't have a relationship with Jesus and she'd drop off her, her children at the, at the church and I went over and talked with her and prayed with her and she got saved and the same thing Misty mm -hmm. I mean so it was like here I was thinking I so in answer back answering your question which ministry you like the best well you know children's ministry because if you minister to a child you're going to minister to the parent sure it's so true. If they see that you are influencing and, and you know, touching their child's life, when something happens in their life, who are they going to turn to? Mm -hmm. They may not be churched, which most right. of the parents weren't churched. Right. Who are they going to turn to? Well, they're going to go to their teacher, the child's teacher, or their director. And, and so I love that. You think that you're just, you know, teaching an easy Sunday school lesson, but yet somehow you're still reaching the whole, the family. whole family. That's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, you love the people who love your kids, right? Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if somebody loves my kids, I'm they're they're a okay in my book. Exactly. Right? You know, they become top for top, sure. So, that's yeah. awesome. One of the things that is all over our house in the church here is the statement that me uh winning in life, mm -hmm. making winners in life. That's kind of like what we want to do in everything we set our hands out yeah. to do every project all the things so tell me what that statement truly means to you what does it mean to be winning in life winning in life um it means you're you're always going forward always moving forward always growing in god's plan you know i know that a lot of times you have a vision of what winning looks like but I always want to be winning what it, to what God's winning looks like. Not my winning, but his winning, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I like that answer. Okay, Mom. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for stopping by. This has been fun. Yeah, thank you for thank you. thank you for being a part. It was an honor just to sit and visit with you a little bit. We don't Aww. always get the time or the, yeah, for sure. the availability. Um, Pastor Annette runs a... Uh, a very full schedule, I think, especially in the fall right now. So, oh, for sure. Thank you for taking the time. I don't know. We'd have so many things that go on in the fall here, yeah. and we know that it puts a lot of demand on you. So, we appreciate your time, oh, and we're really no looking forward. This was awesome. Thank it was you. Super fun. So, we look forward to the next time when we can sit down with Pastor Net or in our next guest. So, um, be sure to tune in next week. Bye.